Hey everybody, today we are talking about Strange Weather in Tokyo by Hiromi Kawakami. Strange Weather in Tokyo is a story told in less than 200 pages about a friendship that is quite unlikely. It follows our main character in the first person, Tsukiko Omachi, and Sensei, whose actual name is Arutsuna Matsumoto. But in the book, since he was, he used to be her high school teacher, one of her high school Japanese teachers, and that's why she calls him sensei. Moreover, when they first run into each other at the beginning of the book, she forgot his name. And so she just, she remembered him enough to know like, oh, I think he was one of my teachers. So she just automatically called him sensei to kind of cover that she forgot his name for a minute. And then from that point on, she pretty much just always calls him sensei. This story, really, I enjoyed quite a lot. There was a spot in the middle, maybe front middle, that I was a little worried that I actually wasn't going to like the book as much as I wanted to like it. But then by the end, I did. <laughs> I liked it a lot. Um, there's not really much I can say without going into like spoilers because it is under 200 pages. But what I can tell you about it is that it is, like I said previously, about this friendship that has sparked when the two of these um, people meet up with each other, not planned, unplanned. They both happen to go to the same bar and they happen to sit um, close to each other at the bar one night and recognize each other and struck up a conversation. And from then on, they don't ever really make plans to continue to see each other. They just do go about their days Tsukiko goes to the bar whenever she feels like it, and if he happens to be there or shows up while she's there, then they sit next to each other, they pour their own um, alcohol, and they just talk to each other. And so they start to get closer and closer with it also being just very spontaneous at the same time. And so there is a really big age gap. She is now, she's no longer high school age. She is in her late 30s, and so... Um, he has also gotten older. He is like early seventies, late sixties. He's also older and they, it's like a 30 year gap between them. And somehow they have become really good friends. It's just very unlikely that you would meet up with one of your past professors and find out that you have enough in common to actually get along with each other, especially with this age gap. And so it is unique in that way where I think like there are stories out there where there's age gaps, of course, but in terms of the books I've read in the past few years, none of them have had this big of an age gap where it just centers around their unlikely friendship and how they go about seeing each other spontaneously and then where it grows into more than just spontaneous, but actually like making plans and saying, would you like to come with me? to the marketplace there is a part where they go shopping together and so they are actually starting to make more solid plans the more it goes through and so then they're getting just really close and you can really tell um since this is in Tsukiko's perspective that she is being very distant at first but then slowly starting to open up more to sensei and realizing how important he actually is in her life because before that she kind of was just a loner she just she lives on her own doesn't really it doesn't have like friends that she's constantly hanging out with she just goes to the bar alone and so now having sensei in her life it's given her like made her think more about how fulfilling her life can be with him in it versus when she was just alone even though she thought she was fine on her own but that's kind of how it goes isn't it like when you are alone in your life when you have time where you are to yourself um it's kind of easy to to be like this is great i can do whatever i want whenever i want to i don't need to rely on anybody i can live my own life and do what i want to do and just invest in my career and my hobbies and all that and i don't need anyone else to be fulfilled but then when you meet somebody and you start to become close to them 
it, your mindset thinks, how did I live without this person in my life? Like, how did I function properly? Like, it just, it's, once you have something that you didn't have before, it's kind of like you didn't realize you needed it or that you even wanted it. And now it's a good thing. It's a great thing. So at the time of you being alone, you had a great time. And now with someone else, you have a great time too. And now you like this better, even though that time on your own wasn't necessarily bad. It just seems like it's enhanced now because you have something that you didn't before that you didn't realize you cared to have. And I feel like that's kind of her perspective kind of shifts a little bit because of now having someone that she hopes she runs into when she goes to the bar, which she may not see. Sometimes there's weeks that go by before they see each other and they just pick back up like they saw each other two hours ago. And so it's that kind of a special connection, special friendship that they have. And I just think that's really great. I think it's, there's just a turning point in the middle of the book that would be too spoilery to tell you. So you got to read it. You got to read it so you can know why I got to the point where I started to love it versus just like it. By the end of this, I I was like wondering if I was going to like become emotional like I did when I read Please Look After Mom. I was like, this isn't going to be like that where it just like hits me with something that makes me like feel really intensely, is it? And it didn't. <laughs> it almost did though. Like it it was making me feel like really good. It was it was like a bittersweet ending, so I was like knowing that this that it made sense for the way that it went, but also that it was like, I don't know, bittersweet, I think is a good way to say with um, how I felt by the end. And so even though it didn't make me emotional enough to cry, um, it was still a really good read. And yeah, less than 200 pages. It's like 179 pages or something like that. So it's actually a really perfect size for if you have like a weekend that you have some time and you just want to try to knock out a book in a couple of days because this book took me I was kind of casually reading it but it took it still took me like less than a week to finish so if you need something that's just kind of a filler book before you start a big book this is kind of what I was doing with this one I was kind of reading it in between some other books because of the length and I'm glad that I did it because I did I really wanted to read this during the summertime and it just hit for me. I just really liked it. So if you are intrigued by anything that I've said about a friendship with like a, an age difference that is very tasteful, well done, very realistic for that kind of a friendship, the way that it's played out, I just think everything that the author did here just fit really well. I just think it was a really good job with how it ended, with how it begin, began, just I think it really is something that you should um, read. And maybe in the future I'll do a full spoiler review just because I do have things I could say that um, if you're interested to know the whole thing or if you have read it and you want to know more of my thoughts, then uh, you can let me know that and maybe in a while down the road I'll come back and do it again with a full spoiler review but for now that's all I have to say about this um Strange Weather in Tokyo great book pick it up um and read it so you can know why I love it so much and see if you love it too um anyway I've been talking for too long so thank you so much for watching I appreciate you and I'll see you in the next one bye